maybe um, first love of, of maybe it was Smokey. Let's, let's talk about your last love. The man that... Uh, <laughs> my life now? Yeah, that you're yeah. with right now. How did you meet him? I heard he didn't know who you were when he met you. Uh, he, uh, well, he's a very conservative Norwegian. You know, but, he's a but business come on. man and he... No, wait, wait, wait. It, no matter where you go, I bet you could meet a guy in a bar on Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> and he's... You know, I mean, he would, he would know you. How does this man not know you? Uh, because he's uh, from a different world. It's a different world, the business world of shipping and that kind It's a different world. He's from Europe. Uh, he said that his friend said, said that they took him to a concert, but for some reason he doesn't remember when I was with the Supremes. I don't think uh, he really <laughs> didn't know me. When I met him, I met him. It's really nice to meet someone that is not re that doesn't really know you because then if they love you, they love you for who you are yeah. and not because of the image or who you represent. So... In meeting him, it really was, I think it was a new, I think it was new. His child, my husband has climbed, my, climbed Mount Everest, which to me is, you know, a, it's like ain't a mountain high enough. Yeah. And uh, uh, his son said, do uh, you like her? She's Diana Ross. He said, I don't know her, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a 20-year-old son. Yeah. Um, and then we met after that. It was like a relationship that began through two people meeting each other. Yeah. The vibes were right. The chemistry was right. It was real good. And he had his own money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his own self-esteem. I mean, he, he is his own person. He's very secure in who he is, yeah. which uh, really makes a big difference in a relationship. Yeah. You know, like, like meeting you and I hear you talking, you're talking about love and all that kind of stuff. And I met you backstage for the first time. I can't believe I'm in this comedy. We feel like we know each other. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Gosh, especially I, I feel like I know you. Yeah. And when, when you think of Diana Ross, sometimes you think of the kind of publicity that the press might set up or a Mary Wilson interview on something. What are the misconceptions? of who you are, because I'm finding you to be a different person than sometimes I hear, you know? <laughs> you know, you always hear about the diva, you, you know? Really? Yeah, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think that uh, I have tried very hard to be a private person because I'm raising children. I have five kids, and I think it's really important for them to have a foundation in their lives and to have some, some kind of, um, foundation where uh, all of the wrong things don't come into play. I mm -hmm. want them to have a normal upbringing, so I try very much to say, keep privacy. Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, a lot of, of the um, negativity might come up that I yeah. can't destroy. You know, I just say, yeah, I'm not going to go and try to... In other words, I am who I am, and people realize that. I think most of the audience knows that it's been 30 years of a wonderful career. At the yeah. same time, I'm raising children. I'm a working mother. And I spend a lot of time trying to do the right things uh, about raising my children. Mm -hmm. And so um, even though I have a career and I'm a singer and a performer and a lot of these things come up, I really kind of just let them be part of the flow, you know, yeah. in my life. I think the question might be a little selfish on my part, too, because knowing where you've been and who you are, I think living in a fishbowl, is complicated for a young guy like me, and I, I'm kind of asking you because I wonder how you deal with um, some of the negative, some of the lies, some of the things you have to you have to have thrown at you being in the public eye. I hope at some point that maybe I will be able to write a book, but I keep thinking that if I write, I'd like to write about the things that uh, have made a difference in my life and make a difference for other people. There's a lot of times I meet young people that say that I've been an inspiration in their lives, mm -hmm. and I like to be able to talk about how I've overcome some of the difficult times and where I've come from and what the way I, I enjoy my life now. To me, I will rather not deal in negativity but mm -hmm. in positive stuff. That's what the song is really about, mm -hmm. uh, Force Behind the Power. If I can do that, that's really more important to me. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it is a battle sometimes. Does it hurt you sometimes? Uh, you mean what, if someone says something yeah, negative? Yeah, something or read if you're, something. If you're in the public eye, if you're a celebrity, you've got to be open to that. Yeah. It really is part of what that is. If I don't put too much energy on that, mm -hmm. I know who I am and what I believe I am. Yeah. People close to me know that. Most of the, most of the audience knows that, yeah. you know. And so that's part of this show business thing. They like to deal on that crappy stuff, you know. Yeah. 
uh, but uh, it's not who I'm about, and I try not to really stay into that. And mostly I think I can stay about it because I really, it is love, pure love, it is love. Mm. You know, if you can stay in love, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, when the Josephine Baker story came out, now I know a little bit about you, of what I think is yeah. is real. I always thought you'd end up being the one to do that because I, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I know you you love the woman's career yeah. and you met her once. Yeah, kind of. I have a passion about Josephine Baker. It's a passion. And it seems like, for some reason, this woman must be rolling over somewhere because I'm still so very involved in her life. I've been researching and being involved in her life for maybe the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I met Josephine Baker. She walked up to me in a concert. She walked... I went to see her perform. She walked through the audience, and she walked straight up to me, and she put her hands in my hair, and she just stared at me and never said a word and walked away. And then it was like something that said, you know, like, I needed... To do this person's life, I wanted very much. To, I didn't really, after doing Billie Holiday, I didn't really want to do another uh, a story about a person's life, you know. So after this uh, uh, re meeting, this kind of uh, energy between the two of us, it's as if she was trying to say something to me. And I know um, that what I've been searching for is a project that is the right project, the right story to tell about her life. And I don't think it's been done yet. Yeah. You know, I really don't think it's said it yet. You, you really don't understand what power and what um, uh, force that she made, the Are difference that she made in her life. And I, and I think it's one of the vehicles, it's an event vehicle that I'd like to do, and I still am working on that. The other than the one on HBO, have there been others done? I don't think there's been incredible documentaries done about her life. In fact, you know, some of the information about her, no one's been able to put that on film really mm -hmm. yet, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, nothing. Yeah. Just some waiting for mine, hopefully. <laughs> Motown has a film division. Do it there. You should do yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was very sexy when you grabbed and pulled your own hair. I don't <laughs> know what it was about that, but it, it, it was... <laughs> it turned me on. Call me sick. Smack me. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it was very sexy when you said... Um, <laughs> thanks for coming by. And... <laughs> As a matter of fact, can I do that just once? Again? No, you uh, cannot. Okay, 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 okay. Don't touch my fro, okay? Okay, okay. okay. You want me to touch your hair? Well, if you pull mine, I'll pull yours. No. <laughs> <laughs> when does the album come out again? This album it was supposed to be out like last month, okay? I've been waiting for Stevie Wonder because he's been working with Spike Lee on uh, Jungle? Jungle Fever. Mm -hmm. So Stevie's been driving me crazy, but I love him really. Mm -hmm. uh, the album will be out uh, July. Okay. And we're touring, and I really want you to check your newspapers because this is the biggest tour I've ever done, and I'm all over the world this time, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing really. If if I'm in New York, I'm doing every spot in New York. If I'm in California, I'm doing the amphitheater in every spot. Here. I got a few spots. It's just there were so many I couldn't do no, them all. No, read just a few. <laughs> okay, <laughs> July 25th through the 28th, Universal Amphitheater, yes. right here in Los Angeles, yes. and in mid September, uh, Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. You all you all will have to just check your local newspapers and find out when the boss is coming to a theater near you. <laughs> 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 